All right. Welcome back to Newmaker's interview with uh, John Hankins, a financial therapist. Last video, we were discussing the topic of mental health challenges that are facing older Americans when it comes to retirement. Now, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those challenges specific to people who are, you know, a few years before retirement and the people who are after retirement. So, John, tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of the the differences between those challenges that are being faced in both of those timeframes. Sure. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, I think that if we look at the before retirement side, um, we have this, this concept in um, the whole financial management world called uh, financial self-efficacy, which is okay. probably a little too academic a term, but really it's basically how effective are you in managing your finances? And as we talked about briefly in the in the last video, when you retire, it's you know it's on you one way or the other. You know it's it's on you to do it yourself or to find someone else. And I think that the before retirement piece is is the time for you to both sharpen your plan and own your plan. Okay, it's 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 one thing. And again, I, I down this road, you in today's world, we move around, we have multiple jobs, you wind up with with, you know, what I would just call orphan 401ks out there that you need to convert over to an IRA, pull all of that back. You've got your present job. You've got a 401k there. The first thing that I think you need to do is solidify that picture. Where is all this money? I was just talking to a, a client the other day who, who um, yeah, the, the, one of the first things that, that struck me was this was an individual that that I think had more assets than they realized, but they did not have a picture of mm -hmm. that whole bundle. They they said, oh yeah, I've got this little, and it was like every 10 minutes, they were saying, oh I, yeah, oh, I, I have this over here. I oh And yeah, I, I worked there for five years and I contributed some money there. So, the first thing is to pull that together so you have a picture of you know what you really have yeah. um, and then make some decisions about how do i ensure that this is working for me you know that i'm really optimizing these dollars i i think one thing one thing that worked for me was putting it all into a into a uh, i don't want to say a single account but into a single institution, okay. like like a, a Fidelity or a Vanguard or you know a T Rowe Price, take your pick. But I think it I think that your your vision of your assets becomes much easier to uh, digest when you only have to go to one place. You, you may have five accounts, but you only have to go to one place to look at all of that. And I think that just that just takes some friction out of the process, which yeah. I think is helpful. The next piece, I think, is to then sharpen your plan. How is how's this going to work? Oh, if I retire in, if I'm going to retire in eight years, you know, or X years, whatever it is, what's my target for returns in my in that time frame up to retirement? Because um, mm. You know, you've got this, you're going up and then you're going down in a sense. Yeah. Um, but I'm um, contributing. What what does that mean in terms of, of, you know, the growth of my principal for when I pull that trigger when I retire? OK, yeah. so what is what's my target? What does this look like? I, I, I this is a, a saying. I don't I don't know who came up with this, but you manage what you measure. Oh, OK, yeah. And. What I and I before we it's a true story before just before we started this video, I went back and I opened up an Excel file that I started. The first entry in that file is December 31st of 2005. And that was um, my first attempt at laying out all of these assets and looking at where I was at. And I've measured that every quarter since then. Every wow. single quarter, I I I do that, and I I had targets. It was kind of 
oh, I, I want to make, am I making 5%? Let's just put it there. Am yeah. I making 5%? Um, and the, and I, I, excuse me, I, I don't want to downplay this, but, but this has been very good years for the stock market. There's been some downs, but mostly a lot of ups. And yeah. um, I'm lucky. You know, we're, if, you're, if you've been in the market for the last 20 years, you've generally been, been lucky. Um, but at, at any rate, putting together that plan and having some understanding of you know, what, what your target is and, and how you're going to get there. Now, I think this, this is where a financial advisor can play a really important role in helping you understand just, okay, what, what should my split be between you know, equity and fixed income? What are these different pieces? It's, I, I think, a, a combination of getting educated and getting expert advice. I think without the education, the expert advice to me is a, is is kind of scary in a way. Mm. You've got you, you've got somebody um, who's just saying, "Yeah, do this, this, and this. Don't worry about it." I, I think it's your life you ought to worry about. It. You had said something uh, that that I thought really resonated, which is you know, the education is kind of key in this environment and that people can effectively kind of educate themselves into a, a more comfortable place uh, with their retirement. I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball at you. Uh, what advice might you give to people who are, maybe they're ashamed of their financial picture, maybe they're worried about their financial picture too much, and that causes them to be avoidant of looking at that financial picture. Uh, what advice might you give to them? Well, yeah, that is really typical of a, of a uh, unfortunately significant portion of the population. Mm. Well, I think that's why financial therapy exists, is for those people. Uh, that you should separate out this uh, educational didactic piece from this emotional piece. And you, you should you know, find someone to help you talk about the emotional side of it. Yeah. If if all you're going to get is a lecture on this is the difference between fixed income and equity, that's not going to get you anywhere. And I I think, and this this goes back to what I was saying previously. I, I think that you know we have this kind of unrecognized mental health crisis uh, where we we need to. Uh, and, and I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to just sell financial therapy here. I, but I, I think that, you know, it, it, once you scratch the surface for all of us, money it p plays this big emotional part in our lives that really goes, uh, you know, kind of unsupported in a way. So yeah. I think recognizing, recognizing that the issue is not, uh, I don't understand this, but the issue is, yeah, I ha I, I, I'm carrying a lot of shame. I've built up a lot of debt all of those pieces, finding someone to help you work that through, I think is key. It's, it's not only key, it's, it's, it's just absolutely necessary to make that leap to then being able to uh, take some control of your financial situation. You can't yeah. do one without the other. Yeah, it's interesting because I think that, you know, in, in when you were talking about being able to educate yourself and being able to get to where you need to be, and understanding that there are some of those barriers there, <clears throat> you know, the the success of your retirement seems to be very similar to the success of you at your job. You know, when you're at, in a job, you ask for help when you need it. You learn about the things that are important to your job and those things contribute to your success. And it, it sounds like you're saying a lot of those same mindsets can be taken into that retirement sphere before retirement. Yeah, I think that's that's a great analogy. It's kind of like this is your job, you know. This is this is part of you're going to have a new job, and this this is part yeah. of it, you know. Yeah. Ma managing your your uh, your finances is uh, you know part of your new job as a retiree. You know, yeah. it's you know there's a bunch of different a, a bunch of different uh, vectors. You know, uh, being f finding things that 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 give bring meaning into your life. That's part of part of your new job. You know, building 
a a uh, a group of of friends, especially for people where their whole social life was all their I don't even call it their, their social interactions were based on their work life. Um, well, here's here's your new job. You're not working anymore. You need to you know connect yeah. with people. You you need you need to you know build a set of activities that give that give you meaning. You know all those all those pieces. But yeah, a big part of it is you you need to to understand um, your finances. Well, that's great. I think that that's, that's some really fantastic advice in the sense that it, it feels like a brand new and, a, and a, a really daunting challenge, but the the ingredients for success are very similar to things that retirees have faced in the past. So I think that's really great. We're going to go ahead and cut it off at this point. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things for after retirement. So thank you so much for watching and we'll be back. Thanks, Josh.